Thank you so much uh, for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we have a great, very, very exciting event celebrating the highest honor that is given to a researcher, faculty researcher uh, at New Jersey Institute of Technology known as Excellence in Research Medal and Prize. This particular medal and prize is sponsored by the NJIT Board of Overseers. So my deep, deep gratitude to all um, Board uh, of Overseers uh, who are here and who are not here. Um, I would like to request uh, that uh, before I start the ceremony uh, with President Lim uh, to uh, give us welcoming remark uh, that this is a specifically very special event for all of us as you are going to see a, a very, very accomplished faculty who is world renowned is going to be honored today. In fact, um, this particular honor is mutual. Um, so at this particular time, I would request uh, our ninth president, uh, Tech Lim, uh, to give us welcome remark. Thank you, Atam, for the opportunity to say a few words here. Good evening. Uh, thank you for coming to celebrate this wonderful occasion. So, uh, welcome to the 2023 NGIT Board of Overseer Excellence in Research Award, as Atam has just mentioned. So, it is my great pleasure to be with those of you who are present today and those of you who are not present but present in spirit, uh, as well as the viewers who are joining us uh, via our live stream. So apparently we have folks uh, uh, on Zoom. Hi. <laughs> this is a wonderful occasion to celebrate our university's community's prolific researchers. And I would like to begin by thanking Dr. Atam Dewan, NGIT's Senior Vice Provost for Research, for his work with the Board of Overseers to make this night possible. In fact, I would want to say this. Um, Atam spent a year as interim provost. While as interim provost, he never let his eyes off the research ball. He continued to ascend, we continue to strive in research. So thank you, Atam, uh, for your commitment. Also, uh, before going any further, I would like to acknowledge the members of the NGIT Board of Overseers who are with us today. And that includes, obviously, um, our one and only chair, Bob Medina. Bob, in case you don't know, Bob also chairs the NJII Board of Directors. Uh, he's also a co-chair of HLLC. Um, he's a great, great friend of the NJIT, a uh, great friend of mine. I can go on and on all night long with Bob. So Bob, thank you for all that you do for NJIT. I also want to uh, acknowledge Ken Kalayo. Ken, thank you for coming. Your, your commitment again, with, along with the other overseers uh, to NJIT is just phenomenal. Um, our very own Andrew Chris, member of the Board of Overseer, Andrew. In case you don't know, Andrew has been, is being inducted to the National Academy of Construction, is that kind of right? This coming Thursday, right, in, in Boston. Um, sorry, Andrew, I won't be able to come because of other duties, uh, uh, presidential duties, but congratulations uh, for achieving that fine accomplishment. Uh, obviously, Atam Dewan is also a member of the Board of Overseer. Again, Atam, thank you for doing that. Uh, Pat Natal, Pat, where are you? Thank you uh, for your contribution. You know, I long time ago when I was the Dean of the College of Engineering and Applied Science, uh, I had a, a Board of Trustees that show up a lot in my office. And so, Pat, I'll tell you, if you show up a lot more, I'm going to give you an office and you can start working for me. <laughs> right. Um, Again, one of our very own Ken Alexo is he here? Ken, Ken bail out on us? Okay, no, no problem at all. He's here in spirit with us. Um, <clears throat> Kathy Natriello, Kathy, thank you for your contribution and also for your commitment to NGIT. Uh, great meeting just now, right, Kathy? Wow, oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, of course, Paul Profeta. Where's Paul? I saw him just now. Paul? He was here. He, he stepped out 
okay, or we'll recognize him again once he walked back in. Uh, John sees Ho. John, John, thank you again for your contribution. Of course, our JIC chair, Steve Saperstein. Where are you, Steve? Thank you for, you know, taking your uh, experience and also your knowledge, okay, to help our JIC do as best it can today. Al Deceda, of course. Al, thank you for your contribution uh, to NJIT. And we'll recognize Paul again once he comes back in, I think. I would also like to extend uh, a warm welcome back to the four former winners of the Ex Excellence in Research Award. Um, I think we have one here, Ham Grable. Ham, congratulations again, okay, for doing that. Um, th we have a few more that uh, weren't able to, to join us tonight. Uh, given the quality and scope of the research conducted at our university, and I was a researcher uh, as well, uh, still is today, uh, not as active as some of the ones that were being honored today, uh, which really, you know, contributed significantly to our R1 status, uh, one of the highest uh, activity research institution uh, in the country. And, you know, without our researcher, those that we honor tonight, and also all our faculty who uh, conduct research, we wouldn't be an R1 institution. And I, I've always said this, research is in our blood. You know, it is a fundamental thing that we do here at this institution. Uh, and, you know, sometimes uh, I see some university administrator here. Uh, you hear this a lot. Uh, hey, this person cannot teach because he does research. This person cannot re do research because he's teaching. I don't believe that. I think excellent researchers are the best teacher because they bring, they bring knowledge, new knowledge to the classroom. They excite our students. They incite new thinking process. And I loved it. I think... Our best researcher, in my mind, are the best teachers, okay? Um, anyway, uh, so this is, this is extraordinary uh, for uh, our candidates uh, who have been recognized tonight. Uh, and this, was, this recognition was established, I understand, back in 2008 by the NJIT Board of Overseers. How many of you were here back in 2008 when this was established? Okay. Thank you <laughs> for your contribution. I was not here, but I'm glad that this was done. Uh, we have so many pioneering researchers from which we choose from, okay? And I've been told last year, and I've been told again this year, this is a difficult task, falls to the dedicated committee. It's very difficult to pick the winners, but, you know, such is life. Uh, but being nominated it itself is an honor in my opinion, okay? So really, the winners is not just the winner tonight. The winner is our entire faculty body who is committed to, to research. That, those are all the winners. And you know what? The true, true winner are our students. They are the ones who benefited from the work that you do. So I do want to recognize the dedicated committee who is responsible for picking the winners tonight. Uh, some of them are not here. Sid Barlar, uh, he's not here. Uh, John Seasholz, I know John is here. Uh, Bob Medina. Ooh. Hmm. Does that mean we have to leave? I know. I see John. I see Andrew living here. Let's see what he says. We probably all should walk out, just in case, right? We'll continue. To be continue. Let's walk out, just in case. The best way to go is go out this way, turn left.
hey, you know, well, physical is faster than electron. We came back before the online came back, right? Well, good. All right, let's start. Well, you know what? I bet you, you will not forget this event. <laughs> right? If my grandkids are here, they'll think that this is so much fun <laughs> with all the alarm going and then go out and come back in again. Uh, but, you know, the silver lining is that uh, some of you reminded that I miss some people. So I'm, I'm going to go back and pick up who I miss. I see that Ken Alexo came back. Ken, where are you? Hope you oh, right, Ken. So Ken is also a member of the Board of Overseer. <laughs> Thank you. I um, also uh, be remiss in not recognizing a couple of other uh, former winners of the Excellence and Research Award that are here or just came back. Well, I miss David Rottenberg. David, congratulations previously. Of course, Gabrielle Esperdi. Gabrielle, you must be doing really excellent work. What can I say, right? Now you're a dean. I hope you still continue your research. Yeah. No, 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 that's good. You know, I can tell you one thing. My research skyrocketed when I became department head. And then it even skyrocketed and it became dean. You know why? Because at that time, I shifted most of my work to industry. And industry, people think differently than academia. They think that you become a department head. You know, in industry, as you move up in rank, you should do more. So they think that when I become department chair, oh, good, now you have the whole department under your control. You should do more research. So they gave me more money. When I became dean, they gave me more money. You know, at one point in time when I was dean, I was advising like 20 plus students as dean. So, Gabrielle, I'm looking forward to the day that I'll give you more money. You can advise more graduate students. Um, where am I? Where did I left behind? I think I was, I was uh, uh, trying to um, uh, thank the dedicated committee uh, responsible for picking the winner uh, tonight. So let me go through that again. Uh, Sid Bala, I know he's not here. Um, John C. Halls, uh, you were in the committee. Bob Medina, uh, Atam Dewan, and Kathleen Atrillo. Uh, thank you so much for your contribution as well. I do, uh, <clears throat> before I go on further, I do want to recognize uh, one also very special individual. Um, our, one of our members of the Board of Trustees is here, Nick Nicolo. Where is your Nick? Oh, Nick, okay. It's always good to see a trustee, you know, uh, on campus participating in the, in the event that goes on here. Uh, for me, it's special because uh, I have 11 bosses, right, Nick? And uh, it's always good to see the, my boss on campus seeing what we do so, so that, you know, they can uh, uh, ensure that, you know, I still have job security after that, right? So thank you, Nick. Uh, so, well, moving on, it is now my pleasure to share with you that for 2023, the NGIT Overseer's Excellent in Research Prize and Medal is being awarded to Distinguished Professor of Civil and Environmental Engineering, Jay Migoda. Okay? <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, wait, oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Congratulations, Professor Migoda. So I must say that, you know, as I mentioned before, this is not just a celebration of Jay's accomplishment. It's a celebration of every faculty member here on this campus that have contributed to the research enterprise of this campus. Whoops. Oh, no, no problem. Stay in place. Okay, good. Um, and then... Stay in place, right? Okay. They're testing. All right. They're getting trying to the thing reset. No problem. Um, and Taha also reminded me this is also a celebration of the accomplishment of the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. So congratulations to, to all of you. So for nearly 40 years, uh, Jay, you can sit down first. Okay. Jay has been the forefront of efforts worldwide to improve the way we manage waste and sustainably remediate contaminated soil and water. And that's critical. Uh, Jay is a prolific researcher and developer of technologies that accomplish those critical tasks. His work to create healthy communities, 
free from toxic Jay, I bet you'll never forget this time. I better hurry up because I got five or six more sentences to go. Let me finish it. Jay, your work to create healthy communities free from toxic chemical has made a truly global impact. And he and his teams of researchers have brought environmental technologies to five continents throughout his incredibly distinguished career. Almost there. Please join me in a round of applause for our 2023 Excellence in Research winner, Professor Jay Migoda. Now, before we learn more about his extraordinary accomplishment, uh, let me please uh, welcome Atam the one back here, and Atam will have a, a much more extensive elaboration of Jay's uh, work. Atam, please. Whew, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lim, and I hope that uh, uh, the alarm is not sensitive to me as much as it was to you. <laughs> so, uh, before I start talking about uh, my dear friend, um, Dr. Jay Megoda, I would like to acknowledge a couple of people. Uh, our provost, Dr. John Palesco, uh, this is his first uh, uh, event uh, to join. So, uh, Dr. Palesco, welcome to this particular celebration tradition. Uh, and also, I think that our chief uh, scientific officer of uh, BBSO and a previous winner of excellence in research medal, Dr. Hyman Wong, has joined over there. Right. So um, let me tell you a, a short story, and uh, I hope the alarm doesn't go off. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, it was about 2004, 2005. Uh, I was sitting on a um, uh, terminal uh, of Hong Kong International Airport trying to uh, get a flight uh, back to Newark, and I saw a familiar play, uh, face, you know, two rows down uh, on, the, on the airport. And I, and, and I passed by, I said, uh, you are Dr. Jay Magoda. And uh, he said, yeah, <laughs> and he recognized me. Uh, but Importantly, uh, he's a great person with a lot of passion and compassion and empathy, caring about the students all over the world. He was the one that he was talking at that particular time, you know, creating the program Engineering Without Borders and, you know, finding out with Haiti and uh, other uh, the students uh, that were there in order to uh, combine the student power, I mean, this is the thing that I want to say that, the student power, the students, undergraduate students has a tremendous imagination, tremendous creativity, and fearless innovation, you know, power. Because as we grow, uh, 
you know, mature, I don't want to say grow older, I'm pretty old. <laughs> um, we have biases, we become less risk takers, but the students are very, very you know, freelancer. So they, uh, th they can think about, they can create. So uh, Jay recognized that particular power. Uh, at that particular time, uh, I was putting together multidisciplinary design studio uh, at, uh, uh, in, in, in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, and we resonated on bringing programs and the resources and giving the opportunities to undergraduate students to get involved with research and innovation. So I had um, great respect. And then what happened, the following year, it happened again. So believe me, I'm not making a story. I think within five years, we met three times at the same airport, <laughs> right? And uh, I learned, every time I learned more that he is involved with this country, he's involved with that country, and it started building a bigger and bigger, the engineering, in, uh, engineering uh, uh, across the border, or engineering without border. And after that, uh, I changed the role and I started interdisciplinary design studio and then later un um, uh, university-wide undergraduate research and innovation. I started the summer research program and then the next thing I see that he sends me an email and he said, uh, I would like that university supports and I'm going to be bringing 20 students from Brazil. Remember that? And I said, how are we gonna accommodate them into the summer research experience? I mean, this is great, you know, international summer experience. Uh, with the high school, and, and these were all, not all undergraduate students, I remember, some of them were high schoolers, and some of them for, uh, were undergraduate students, and I was also starting uh, the program uh, for the high school provost summer uh, internship. Uh, so again, we resonated and we made it happen. So more I learned about Jay, the more I got impressed, and I found out that Jay would like to address the unmet needs of the society, uh, global environment sustainability, by finding some solutions which are creative, innovative, and cost affordable. And the next thing I knew that uh, we also supported a cohort of the students who uh, through uh, URI program uh, during the summer to have the clean water um, solutions in Haiti, and, and he led that particular project over there. So um, it's my great pleasure uh, to uh, join you and our distinguished guest in recognizing Jay Magoda uh, for his many consequential dis contributions to our campus and extending its impact across the continents and across the world as a researcher, as a technologist, and as an environmental policy advocate. I want to focus tonight on his pioneering efforts to protect our land, air, and water through his innovative ideas and technology development. Jay's drive to develop innovation technologies toward creating a sustainable planet is one of the NGIT's core research missions. As you know that we have the three grand challenges at NGIT that we are uh, putting our resources and a strategic investment into healthcare innovation, sustainable societies, and the data revolution. So um, the, this long list of the contributions from the research uh, uh, from uh, uh, Dr. Magoda uh, contributes to uh, our grand challenge. Um, he has contributed for more than four decades and has been developing innovative technologies which have translated and some of them are still in the face of the validation um, uh, to, uh, uh, to the societal applications uh, to create a sustainable uh, planet. Uh, but also in the area of solving the problem of remediating
contaminated soil and producing clean water in rural environment specifically. His advocacy for health communities has taken him to five continents from the most densely populated regions in the world, such as the northern New Jersey area, to remote villages in South America that lack basic infrastructure. He is loved and rewarded mentor on campus who inspires his students to think innovatively and to always put people and communities at the center of their work. As a researcher, Ajay's interest and capabilities are wide ranging. He tackles diverse environmental problems from legacy pollutants, from long uh, shuttered uh, factories to contaminations of emerging concerns to the proliferating electronic waste of the 21st century. More recently, he is devising new ways to reuse waste from homes and businesses, such as fabricating recycled glass composite construction material and products. A very, very important area because, you know, the people, uh, all of us don't realize that how much we are generating in terms of the waste of the construction material and specifically glass. Jay is uh, currently designing and building yet another uh, innovative device, a portable sonoreactor for the US Air Force that will degrade PFAS, which is another toxic problems along with the lead that we are facing. Long lasting chemicals that is used in industrial coatings into harmless byproducts using ultrasound. It, deploy, it, de, it deploys high frequency and high power sound waves to create nanobubbles that briefly reach temperature up to 5,000 degrees as they implode, breaking heat and water resistance PFAS molecules into atoms within nanoseconds, how innovative, without creating any toxic effect. The process neither uses nor creates any toxic material. He plans to test this prototype next March at an Air Force facility in Texas and Pennsylvania. He first used nanobubbles in remediation just miles away from NJIT campus on the, on, on the polluted Passaic River, where as a member of a citizen advisory group, he investigated the applications of ultrasound coupled with ozone to decontaminate river sediments, another unmet need in the society, right here. Um, looking forward, he is now working with the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection on policies to manage the coming onslaught of EV battery waste, another problem that we are going to be facing in exponentially increasing with all those EV cars and other things where we are gonna put out the batteries. Uh, as a mentor, Jay has had an enormous impact on campus and the environment through his students. In 2007, at the urging of a doctor who treated people in Haiti and cited environmental degradation as the key source of health problems, he founded the NJIT chapter of Engineering Without Borders. Through, it, uh, through the chapter, his students use their passion, ingenuity, and growing expertise to build elemental systems to filter water and dispose the waste in remote resource poor regions using only the materials at hand. That's why I pointed out very cost for affordable innovative solution. Building their systems on site, uh, they connect meaningfully with the communities they were serving. The group now begins working um, in 2008 in Milot, a village in northern Haiti where 
they built a simple bio sand filtration system to clean water. And I know that because one of the group presented that into the URI as a proposal into a contest. Uh, over the years, successive teams refined their model, making it lighter and portable. In Mecca Grand, uh, Grande, Ecuador, his students recently designed and built a spring cap to clean and increase the supply of water from a natural spring. Their successors are now designing a gravity powered system to pipe the water to individual houses. Jay encourages his students to seek out other problems to solve. What a drive in order to not only do the translational research, but bringing innovative solution in the society, in the under-resourced environment to make it work. Thus, another team devised a cell phone charging station in Melot using a simple technology, a modified bicycle, with a back wheel that turns into a generator, producing up to 20 watt of electricity. For many EWB, which is Engineering Without Border alumni, these experiences launched careers. It is now my pleasure to introduce a video highlighting Dr. Jay Megoda's work. Can we roll the video, please? The primary focus of my research is environmental sustainability. Right now, in my mind, <laughs> one of the serious problems is the uh, contamination of PFAS or the forever chemicals. And the other one is uh, microplastics. Most of the airports, airfields, always there can be fires and, and uh, the fire retardants and mostly made up of PFAS material. So uh, they, those are released to the ground and uh, most of the, the sites are contaminated with uh, uh, PFAS. And uh, we are developing a new technology, which is uh, funded by the US Air Force uh, to destroy the PFAS. We are applying ultrasound, high frequency, high power ultra ultrasound. Uh, it creates uh, tiny micro bubbles uh, or the nano bubbles. And, and those bubbles implode with the continuous application of ultrasound. The, those uh, pl locations of implosion uh, uh, creates uh, very high temperatures, around 5,000 degrees uh, centigrade, which is almost the temperature of the surface of the sun. And that's sufficient to destroy the bonding of atoms. Uh, and uh, right now what we're doing is we are uh, optimizing the reactor so that we can minimize the energy consumption so that it will be much better than some of the technology which is uh, available out there. So we looked at the, uh, this recycling. Uh, we can recover paper. Uh, we can recover metal, but glass, unfortunately, we collect it and it goes to the landfill. So the state is aware of this and the state wanted to see how the, the glass can be utilized in a productive way. So we proposed that maybe we can use uh, plastic mixed with glass to make construction blocks, uh, facades for architectural applications. We are diverting that waste stream which are going to uh, landfills into beneficial use. Fifty years ago, companies in New Jersey uh, imported chromium ore and process in uh, several locations in, in Hudson County. They are creating a lot of problems right now. And um, so uh, the state and also the US EPA uh, asked us to look into this. And what we proposed was uh, to melt this uh, chromium contaminated soils. And uh, when we melt silica, it makes glass. And uh, in the glass matrix, uh, you have spaces where the chromium get trapped and they stay uh, permanently. Uh, right now I have five projects running and uh, that's, that's quite demanding. 
But uh, I'm blessed with uh, very good students who are working for me. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's very rewarding to shape the, the young minds. And the research is a place where they are forced to do the critical thinking. What motivates in my research is to come up with uh, uh, sustainable solutions which also have uh, economical benefits. I think we need to, as uh, scientists, we also need to be helping policymakers. And, and uh, so we couple and come up with a, uh, innovative solutions so that everybody wins. I, I do work with not only NGIT, I work throughout the world, more than 15 or 20 countries in uh, different backgrounds too. We sit down, we debate, and that's how we come up with better products. Most of our undergraduates, uh, when they come, they, they have this high ideal to serve the community. I'm the faculty advisor for the Engineers Without Borders, and uh, right now uh, we are working in Ecuador, and uh, we are trying to provide drinking water to a community of about uh, 300 people in, up in the Andes. The students find it very rewarding there's real human connection of whatever they learn can be transferred to human benefit. We should leave this planet for our children and the grandchildren and their children. If I can do that, I feel very energetic to get up early morning to come to work. It's my privilege to introduce Robert Medina, Chair of the Board of Overseers. Shortly after, uh, he will be joined by President Lim to present the 2023 NGIT Overseers Excellence in Research Medal and Prize to Professor Medina. Thank you, Tom. Wow. You know, every time I come to NGIT, I'm impressed, and tonight is, is, is no exception. I'm, I'm really impressed by all the work uh, that Dr. Magoda has been doing around the world and, uh, you know, sitting on the, on the uh, committee where we reviewed a lot of the faculty and a lot of the professors, you know, the, the work that's being done at NGIT is just amazing. Uh, but I must say, uh, Dr. Magoda just elevated that level. You've raised the bar for everybody. So it's my honor tonight to take part in the presentation of the Overseer's Excellence in Research Award this year in recognition of an outstanding scholar. Uh, the accomplishments of the NGIT faculty members like Professor Magoda are both inspiring and influential. He represents the groundbreaking work that our res researchers do here every day. Uh, Professor Magoda, who will now receive his award, demonstrates for us the service to students, the service to our communities in New Jersey, and to communities all around the world. It's one reason that this service, this research, and this innovation has ranked us in the Wall Street Journal as in the top 20, the 19th overall university in the nation, and the number two in terms of public universities in the U.S. So congratulations, uh, Dr. Magoda, and please come up to accept your award.
So uh, thank you all for coming, and thank you. Um, uh, I, I have to, this, this is not my award. This all of us contributed, so we have to share. So let me try to tell uh, um, um, a few words. Um, so first of all, I had to thank the selection committee. And uh, they had to review 38 years of my work, <laughs> which, which is also very unique because after 38 years, people take easy. And uh, getting an award 38 years after that is, is very unique and also which gives you ins inspiration for other faculty uh, to, to accomplish this. And, and it's, it, it's, it's, it says it's possible. If I can do it, others can do it. So thank you for the committee. And, and also, I have to thank NGIT. NGIT gave me total freedom to work on various areas, unimaginable. And, and, and that made my life very rich. I, I, I could talk to many people in, in different areas. So one of the things which you probably you are not aware is that uh, we, we have food, food base, uh, which, which goes to, uh, um, to a facility, and uh, uh, Andrew is going to pay $100 a ton uh, to get rid of it. And uh, so we got some funding from New Jersey DEP, and which we're going to start very soon, to have a biodigester. And we're going to try with the faculty dining, outside the um, faculty dining, and we're going to design, develop, and implement, and test it. And if, if that is successful, I like, uh, um, Andrew volunteered that, uh, I don't know how he's going to do that, uh, four more of them uh, so that uh, the, the faculty, uh, the students' cafeteria waste can be also recycled. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, buy the digest it, and uh, the digested food waste goes to as la uh, fertilizer, so we don't have to pay for the fertilizer, for the shrubs and the trees and other things. And also, at the same time, we recover gas, biogas, which we are planning to use in labs. So, and, and I'm, I'm very excited to start. Um, and, and also another, another, another research which I plan to do very soon will be uh, we're looking at the storage of uh, 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 hydrogen in, in um, shale formations which were depleted with the uh, fracking. And, and um, I have to thank my family, especially my parents, who brought me to this world, and my sisters and my lovely wife uh, for <laughs> almost uh, 36 years, uh, 37 years, <laughs> and my lovely two daughters. Uh, they, 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 they tolerated me, so I'm so thankful. And, and, and also I have to thank my, sister, uh, my advisors and all the people who taught me uh, to think critically, which is very important. And, um, and then I did not do all, all this by myself. I grabbed people from different departments, our department, I, I have Matt working with the class and I uh, force him to work with me. Uh, and uh, so, uh, I, <laughs> it's, it's, I, I, I dragged him and a um, few others and, and we form a team and uh, we work, we're working and we are very happy to work together. Um, and also the, the uh, collaborators uh, around the world. And, and uh, the, in my collaborators include within the US and everywhere in the world, many places in the world. And then I have to also thank my PhD students. Uh, I was not allowed to invite, uh, only allowed to invite five, so I selected one, uh, Dr. Gao, and also then I had David, uh, where's David? Oh, um, David is faculty, so I don't have, I, that uh, list uh, of five does not include David, so, uh, uh, so um, I have many, I was, I'm very blessed to have uh, uh, great, uh, minds helping me. Um, that's the, 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 uh, the doctoral students, then I have master's students, 
I also work with many uh, undergraduates, and that's not it. I also work with high school students. I have mentioned many high school students. Some, some of the high school students, two of them, actually notably, um, right now in Princeton and in MIT, they still work with me. And, and uh, so I have to be very thankful. And, and, and uh, I also have to thank my chair. You know, um, uh, my research moved around. And uh, around 1950, um, I was kind of lost. And he helped me. Uh, he was working on nanobubbles. And that's how it all started. We worked with nanobubbles with ozone. And, and then we found out that uh, well, nanobubbles uh, uh, is corrosive with ozone. So uh, we generated nanobubbles without any ozone and which is more potent with ultrasound. And um, so um, then I have to thank a town. Um, see, we have a mindset that uh, we do research. It should be from NSF uh, or all the funding agencies. And, and I tried with NSF and it failed. And, um, and then the, the opportunity came, we have a patent and um, I was very reluctant uh, for the Air Force uh, project to work and, and Atam and also Sanjay, our patent attorney, really encouraged me and, and, and really it opened up some, a lot of uh, opportunities for me. And, and finally, uh, EWB. Uh, EWB made, made big difference in my life. And, and, and also I can remember in 2010, a very young undergraduate joined the EWB. And I saw his potential. And I said, okay, can you uh, be the, the vice president? I, I, I think I'm correct. And uh, he said, let me check. And uh, he, he joined and he became the president. And I asked him, we, we were doing at that time the bio sand filters. And um, uh, there was a uh, uh, external agent who was interested in our work. And I said, can you, can you help me with the proposal? So he was very kind to help me. And uh, then he went to Cornell. And then I dragged him to make sure that we are doing it right. So he, he kind of oversaw that everything is coming. And now he's with us, uh, William. Um, it's so wonderful. So the, the thing is, uh, now we have a challenging job uh, in Ecuador, um, in um, hi hi highlands of uh, Ecuador. And we are, cre we, we are uh, uh, giving water, running water, to uh, uh, about 300 people. In, and right now they spend about uh, two to three hours every day carrying water. And they will save all that time. And now uh, we, we finished the first phase, uh, which is the spring cap, which was mentioned. And the second phase uh, is we built a tank. And now is the hard phase, which is uh, uh, get, getting the distribution system on. And it, it will cost about $30,000. And I told the students um, that if you raise a dollar, I will match it on, from my own funds. But it's a little on the high side. Uh, so 30,000 means half of that is 50,000. So I do, if you all can chip me, that will be very nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I, that's all, and I really thank everybody. Uh, it's it's uh, so nice uh, to uh, be so long uh, at NGID and make a, such a big difference to everybody's life. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Please join me in a very appropriate final round of congratulations and applause for our honoree, Professor Jay Magoda. I, I always say that basic and applied uh, research is a challenge, but it's a lot more challenging phase of the translational research, taking the research to the application 
and to address the unmet needs and finding out that all the hypotheses that you created in your lab may not be scalable to the real world application. And then many of you, us are forced back to the ground rule because when we think about a possible solution, we don't think about the other variables, including the cost, including the feasibility, including how this is going to be accepted in the real world and the society. And I can't appreciate enough Dr. Megoda's quest, um, and that's why I said in the very beginning remark that he's a brilliant scientist and researcher, but more importantly, he's a great man with the compassion, with the professionalism, and with the empathy to go out, collect whatever resources he can, and then apply to it to make a difference. So hats off, uh, and uh, uh, we are very, very grateful that you joined us uh, this evening. I would like to thank all who have made today's ceremony a success, specifically uh, the Board of Overseers Committee and uh, the blessings of our chair. Also the chair of the committee on the excellence in uh, research medal, uh, Dr. Uh, Dan Henderson, uh, who is uh, trying to have a fun at another institute uh, of technology called MIT. Uh, but um, we are here celebrating, and we thank him for his services as well. Um, also, um, my staff uh, in the Office of Research, Kimberly Dripchak, and uh, also the p folks from um, Strat Communication and the Advancement Office. Uh, without their support, it would not have been possible. Uh, there are many significant and exciting research initiatives in progress at NGIT under the leadership of our president and the provost. I'm so energized by these initiatives that they are growing with our very talented world-class faculty. We know that their offer efforts will continue to yield the fundamental knowledge applied to the application and then they will have the courage and the passion to take it to the real world application. This is where we are going to make a difference. This is where we are going to take a leadership. This is where we are going to not only make a scientific impact in the discoveries, but we will make economic impact, create the jobs, and make ourselves to a prosperous and healthy society. With that, uh, I would like to thank you all and um, invite you uh, for a reception in the honor of uh, Professor Jay Magoda and concludes the ceremony. Thank you so much for joining us.